Um, okay, so obviously this kind of really begs the question, well, hey, what, what, what was that pseudoers file? Right. What? How do I determine who's actually capable of running pseudo and who is not capable of running pseudo? That, that becomes a really critical, a really important thing. And uh, so we're going to take a look at a different part of the file system. And we'll do this as the sandbox user, as we'll see. A different part of the file system that contains a lot of really critical configuration files. So a lot of your administrative files and a lot of your configuration files are stored in a place called ETC. And some people call it Etsy. Okay, so ETC, Etsy, whatever, um, it's a location found inside Slash. So when we do an LS of Slash, you'll be able to see, like, we've been doing things inside the home directory. We've gone to Slash Home. That's pretty much where we've been existing for all these activities. It's like, well, now we're starting to explore another one called Slash ETC or Etsy. All right. And so this is a location, as I'm emphasizing, this contains a lot of important configuration files, configuration files for your programs, configuration files for Linux itself. Um, sometimes you might think of it like as the control panel for Linux is you got a whole bunch of configuration files that are oftentimes found in there. So if you're not sure where something is, it's a pretty good guess. Like not everything's in there, of course, but it's a pretty good guess. There's a lot of th there's a lot of important things found inside us, uh, slash ETC. Um, so let's LS inside there. Let's 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 actually take a look ls inside slash etc and you know a whole bunch of things it goes way off the screen you got a whole bunch of stuff three columns of all sorts of output here all right so there's a whole bunch of things in here and you'll notice a lot of them are kind of labeled as this like dot conf dot conf dot conf dot conf many of these things that are listed as like dot conf many of those are configuration files right if you ever see that dot conf there's a really good chance that's a configuration file now if it doesn't have it it doesn't mean it's not an important configuration file it could still be a really important configuration file but nevertheless that that's a common thing you see a lot of those inside the slash etc um, and of course there's a whole bunch of uh, important folders as well you got all these folders and inside many of these folders you'll find other dot comp files but nevertheless what we're really trying to hone in on here is well this is where the pseudoers file is found so you notice it's just called pseudoers it isn't pseudoers.conf it's just pseudoers so this is a really important file that's found inside slash etc and what happens if we try to just read it let's try to just cat it out i'll try to just do a cat slash etc slash pseudoers and if I try to just read the file, it tells you like, no, you're not allowed to look at this. All right, this is a really critical file that has information as to who's allowed to run things as pseudo. So yeah, it doesn't even tell you, it won't even show you. So if you're just a standard user or the Bob user, like it won't even tell you who's allowed to uh, actually look at this. We can look at the permissions though. Let's look at the permissions. So if I do an ls-l of slash etc slash pseudoers, I'll look specifically at the permissions of this file and it tells you right there, it's like, ah, this thing belongs to the root user. It belongs to the root user and who's allowed to read it? It's like only the root user, like they're the only ones who are allowed to look inside. And you can see how they've even kind of restricted access to this particular file. They've kind of pulled away all write access. Now the rea reality here, the important thing to realize is that if you can act as the root user, you oftentimes can go in and overwrite and uh, make changes to files anyways, regardless of what the permissions actually are. But nevertheless, it is something that uh, this is why we of course fall into the everyone else category when we're acting as the sandbox user. And it's like, yeah, you're not allowed to see this file. It just gives you this permission denied. So I can temporarily act as the root user, right? I can invoke root privileges by doing sudo. So I could do something like sudo and now try doing the cat command. Now do a sudo cat slash etc slash pseudoers, right? And you see, yeah, that actually will work because now I'm acting as the root user, all right? And so this is a, you see, the, the file's not really all that big. Like it's it's about one screen length. It's like yeah, it's it's got a bunch of information in here, but it's a it's a it's about one screen length. We can kind of pull up the entire file here, and they kind of tell you at the start like, hey, you should really be changing this file using the vi sudo command as root. And yeah, don't worry, we'll get to that in just a second. All right, but then it kind of has some notes in here as well. And the really important stuff that I want to draw your attention to is kind of down here towards the bottom. There is a user privilege specification section, and then there's a members of of members of the admin group members of this group to, uh, are allowed to run things as sudo and so you'll notice there's kind of two different ways you can add information to a to the sudoers file what they're telling you here is that if you are a user that is specifically listed in this kind of format right you see how it says root 
and then there's a tab and then it says all equals all colon all space all like that's how you can write into this file and say this particular user has the ability to run things as sudo so obviously yes the root user has the ability to run things as sudo all right that becomes a really really critical idea now you'll notice the sandbox user is not listed in this file it just says root it doesn't say sandbox and the reality is is because well that's because the sandbox user even though they're not specifically listed in this file they do belong to one of these groups and as we learn a little bit more about groups we'll see exactly which one because that's kind of the restriction if you're not specifically listed in this file then you'd have to look and say well what are the groups what are the groups that also are allowed to act as pseudo and they're telling you here with a percent sign so the percent sign means there's a group called admin and anyone who belongs to the group admin is also allowed to run things as sudo and then finally they're telling you here there's actually a group called sudo and if you're a user who belongs to the group called sudo you are also allowed to run things as sudo all right so we just catted out the file looked at this file bob does not fall into any of those categories bob is not listed in this file bob does not belong to any of those groups and so yeah but this is the reason why bob is not one of the cool kids and is not able to run sudo and, and it, why it caused that error before well let's see how if i wanted to i could modify this file now here's something that you don't ever want to do all right you don't ever want to say well i'm going to go and use the sudo command and start editing this file directly like this technically would work linux would let you do it but this is not recommended at all like doing this like sudo nano slash etc slash sudoers all right uh, linux will allow you to come in here and open this file by doing this command the problem is what if you screw it up what if you break this configuration file what if i deleted the root user from this file all right i'm going to hit Control x because i'm getting a little anxiety attack here looking at this file like what if you accidentally screw up the file linux relies on this file to be functional in order for the operating system itself to work properly so if you did something like remove the root user from the sudoers file that's a great way to break the computer because now even the root user can't run things with the appropriate permissions, and so the operating system itself won't start properly. There's a lot of things that are running in the background as root, and you'd have to learn how do I go into the file system and modify the file system so I can fix the files before the operating system even boots. All right, it definitely there's a lot of, uh, you know, you can do internet searches if you ever break this file on how to fix the file, and, and, and they'll show you how you can do this, but effectively you need to kind of like get into the file system before the operating system even starts up it requires you to restart things because otherwise your computer just won't work it, it definitely relies on this file to be functional so what they're telling you is as we saw in that note is do not edit this file directly because if you make one little typo like that's it your computer's kind of uh, you'll never be able to get into this file again and, and you'll have to learn how to kind of recover the file correctly um, but nevertheless it's like okay this file must be edited with the vi sudo command all right so in other words they're telling you there's a command called vi sudo and in order to run this command, you need to be root. So in other words, you usually have to type sudo space vi sudo, and you don't pass in the file path. This command is specifically designed and go and edit that file. All right, so you don't actually have to give it the file path. You just say sudo space vi sudo and then hit enter. And normally it would ask for your password if you haven't verified your password in a while. We just kind of did it a minute ago, so it still kind of remembers. But nevertheless, it's like, okay, here it is. So you'll notice at the top it says, ah, we're actually modifying slash etc slash sudoers dot temp dot tmp. So you're not actually modifying the sudoers file directly when you use this command. When you use this command, it kind of is modifying a temporary version. And if when you save your changes, if nothing was broken, then we'll actually apply your changes to the official file. So it tries to act a little bit as a fail safe. It, it's still, again, you got to be careful uh, with who actually has permissions and whatnot, but it at least tries to be a fail safe to avoid typos being a problem. So maybe I'll try to do this the blunt way. The blunt way would be, let's try adding Bob to the sudoers file. Like the, 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 the sandbox user is actually already a part of one of these groups, but Bob isn't, and we haven't gotten to groups yet. So let's see how we could just go and add Bob directly to this file. Let's give it a try. So underneath the root user, they kind of have the framework here all laid out for us. Let's go ahead and make another line in here, and we'll add in the Bob user, all right? And kind of just copy the line above it, right? So I'll say Bob, and then I'll hit a tab, 
and now I'll copy exactly the way it is above it and make sure this is case sensitive. So all equals open parenthesis, all colon, all close parenthesis, space, all. Like copy it exact. If you use one little letter that's lowercase, like that's wrong, that won't work. And uh, VI pseudo will kind of catch that and say, nope, you can't apply those changes. But nevertheless, this is what you want to try to do. All right, so now we're trying to add Bob to the pseudoers file so that Bob has permission. All right, and it's always good to kind of come here and check, like, who actually has permissions to these files? Because I could toss these in at the bottom, I could toss them in at the top, I could kind of be a little sneaky and toss some permissions in different places. So it's always important to kind of check to see who are the actual users and who are the groups that actually have a permission to run things as pseudo on my computer. So I'm kind of adding Bob to the list. And now, again, you kind of notice we're editing this with Nano. So we'll have to do a control X, Y, enter to actually save this. Control X, Y, enter. And part of the VI pseudo command is it will look at your temporary changes and then try to apply them after the fact. Um, let's go ahead and like do a pseudo cat. We'll pseudo cat the file out, right? Pseudo cat slash etc slash pseudoers. And we'll see, like, did the change actually go through? Like, yes, underneath root, it now says Bob. So Bob has been added to the VI, uh, to the pseudoers file. Um, can Bob now run things as pseudo? Bob had the problem where before he couldn't actually see his own file. He couldn't even look at his own file. This this cat command that we tried to do, it wouldn't actually work. Well, now let's try adding on sudo as Bob. So as Bob, I'm going to try doing sudo cat slash home slash sandbox slash desktop slash James slash Bob's file. All right. And now what happens? Like, well, verify your password. H-E-L-L-O-1-2-3. And it's like, hey, there we go. All right, I was able to now spit out. It's like, there it goes. It goes, ha, 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 right? That, that was the contents of the file. So even though Bob himself does not have access to read even his own file because it kind of got locked away there, realize because Bob can now invoke sudo, it's like, well, Bob can now start overcoming those privileges. And so doing something like an ls-l, it's like, hey, remember that James folder that got locked down? It's like, well, Bob can now start to work to, to unlock it a little bit. So what were the permissions before? I think before they were seven, and then they had uh, five, five. I think they had they had read access and execute, or yeah, read and execute, but they didn't have write. So maybe as Bob, we'll change it back. As the Bob user, I'll do something like a sudo chmod755 of the James folder. All right, and now when I do my ls-l, it's like I'm starting to unlock the previous oh actually actually i think it was just like the rice folder yeah we can cheat and look at the one underneath so it was actually 775 right not 755 775 let's go ahead and fix it we'll do a sudo ch mod 775 of the james folder and now my ls l kind of confirms it's like yep i was able to reset the permissions back to uh, kind of how they were when when we uh when we originally started all this so it becomes really critical as you continue to explore this information like who's in my pseudoers file what are the accounts that actually have access to this type of stuff who are my privileged users and you know who when when did this stuff happen and uh, definitely understanding this little graphic here this tiny little graphic of who has read a write execute permissions is this a directory is this a file remember ls-l that's an excellent command to be able to start to seeing some of the permissions and being able to modify it um, there are some additional little uh, things you guys could google to learn um, about the chmod command i'm trying to break down exactly the permissions by number um, there are some other little ways using like the plus arrow and the minus arrow or the plus uh, 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 symbol and the minus symbol you can add and subtract different permissions that way, but I'm kind of emphasizing, I think it, I think it's really critical to learn the numbers. And when you learn the numbers, then you can learn some of the shortcuts later after the fact. But nevertheless, I think this is a pretty good start here to understanding different users and seeing what it's like uh, to work with different users. Um, now, uh, to kind of wrap things up and maybe reset things sort of back to how they were, um, you know, we logged into the Bob user in this particular terminal. It certainly becomes just important to say, well, how do I log out? If you access a different user in this terminal, it definitely becomes critical to say, well, how do I log out of this user? And the way you can leave a user is to type the exit command. So the exit command will log you out of whoever you were logged in as back to the previous user. So I could exit this as Bob and now doing my who am I? It's like, well, now I'm back to sandbox. All right. So being able to understand who you're logged into, especially when you have multiple terminals, that's why it becomes important to be able to go and double check these things. And then, of course, if I typed exit again, like if I typed exit again, it's like, well, it'll just go and quit that whole terminal. 
So eventually it'll continue to log you out and log you out. And if there was no one else you were logged in as, it's like, well, then the terminal will just close entirely, right? So I could log out of both of these terminals, right? I could type exit and type exit and like, okay, now I've, I've worked my way all the way out of this and I've, I've exited out of everything. Um, okay, great. So uh, one of the last things uh, maybe that we'll kind of end this little section here with user accounts on um, before we jump into groups and some other topics um, would be, well, what if I had a user account like the Bob user? And, uh, you know, I think uh, Bob is malicious. Bob is a person that shouldn't exist. I don't want Bob. I want to get rid of Bob. All right. So let's let's kind of start to see how we can maybe clean up some of the things we're doing and we'll add it back in later for practice uh, uh, again. So uh, if you have a user and you want to clean up the user, um, in some ways, let's let's try to understand how we could go back through some of our steps and and uh, remove some of the things that we created in this process. So one of the first things that I did, or one of the most recent things that I did, was uh, add Bob to the sudoers file. So maybe I'll go in and remove Bob from the sudoers file. Right? We could do that. I could do a sudo vi sudo. That was a good command to learn and verify this as the sandbox user with password and say, hey, Bob, Bob was a user in here, and uh, Bob should not be in here anymore. So maybe I'll take this whole line here, and I'll just kind of hit the delete button a whole bunch of times and very carefully backspace them out and say, okay, Bob is no longer going to be a privileged user. That That's important. We'll do a control X, Y, enter to save that. It's like, okay, great. Um, another thing, of course, we did was we, we had Bob create a file inside the James folder. I'm actually going to hold on to that one for just a second so we see what happens what happens to a user's files when you delete the user entirely? We'll, we'll be able to see what happens to that. Um, but it also becomes useful to know, well, how do I delete a user? We had the add user command in order to create a, uh, to create a user. In order to delete a user, you have the user del command, user del for like user delete. But uh, just like the add user or the user add command, uh, that uh, those require sudo. So if you want to actually clean up a user, yeah, definitely you're going to need to do the sudo and then user del command. This is a very, very useful one to know about. Now, uh, one of the options you might want to know about uh, as you do a user del is going to be, do you want to actually remove all of the user's home directory when you do this? All right. So if you remember, we had that slash home slash Bob folder that got created when we added the user. And so based on whether you add on a dash R option or not, will determine, do you actually just delete the user or do you leave, delete the user and their home directory, right? I believe it's a capital R, but we'll be able to see it's either capital R or lowercase R. I forget off the top of my head, but let, let's give it a try. So if we had a user del dash R and then say, Bob, let's see what happens. Invalid Bob. Uh, let's try the lowercase r all right let's try uh, lowercase user del dash r of bob it's like okay fine that worked all right so it looks like uh that that it gives an error but this this is actually the one that we wanted it actually tells you like hey we ran the user del command but we didn't actually find var mail bob that that wasn't actually found it's like well you know that that's okay all right. It doesn't mean that the user del command didn't work. It just means that in the cleanup process, there was something that didn't actually get deleted. It's like, okay, that's fine. All right. Because if we ls slash home now, we'll see there is no more Bob folder. All right. So a lot of people will run that user del space dash r command and they'll be like, uh, th there was an error. Something wasn't found. It didn't work. It's like, well, no, it did work. All right. And we could confirm this. Like, let's try to su over to Bob. Switch users to Bob, and it's like, uh, user Bob does not exist. All right, so user del dash r, very useful command if you also want to clean up the home directory. Uh, sometimes you don't want to clean up the home directory because maybe you want to go back and look through some of the stuff that was in that user's home directory. So I, I like to show the option, but I don't want to pretend like it's something you should do all the time. Maybe you should delete it, maybe you shouldn't. Uh, we just had a test user, so I wanted to clean it up, but uh, many times you'll end up keeping it. Um, okay, so what what about that Bob file that was in my James folder? Right? Let's take a look at that. If I do an ls of James, we'll see. Did it delete that file? It's like, well, no. All right, so that did not exist inside that Bob user's home directory. So we still have this Bob's file that's just sort of sitting around here. And what happens to the permissions on it? ls-l of James. And it's like, well, the permissions got defaulted just back to some number. 
All right. So yeah, user accounts, when users are created, there is a number that gets associated with them as well. And so if you ever delete the user, it's like, well, it just kind of sticks in the number to say, well, there was a user, the user was 1001, uh, but that user's kind of gone now. So it does still technically have an owner and it still has a group, but it's not Bob anymore. It's kind of just kind of uh, uh, gone back to just be the number. So anyways, the file is still there. We were able to clean up the home directory. We see that Bob is no longer a valid user to log in as but we still uh, we still were able to kind of main control of uh, all of the stuff that we needed to so all right so good stuff to pay attention to um, we'll continue on here with uh, groups and uh, in, in, in certainly one of the next ones and see see how we can continue to work with other users and manage them on a larger scale uh, leveraging groups